Alright, hello and good morning everyone and fancy seeing you here. It is a Sunday in London and that can only mean one thing. Sunday roast! Yes, let's go. We are gonna have an epic Sunday roast today at Blacklock Shoreditch, but of course without its detours along the way, we're gonna be hitting up Bagel Bake for breakfast with their legendary salt beef bagels as well. So, I'm very excited. You excited? Yes. Alright, let's go. So we got our bagels. Um, also, just behind me over here is another bagel shop. Um, apparently, um, what I've seen on Reddit at, at least, you either go to white or you go to yellow. Yellow. As reference to the color of the signs, but apparently, white's the better one. And I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I had a longer line. Do actually let us know if white reigns supreme. Or if happen. they're just. <laughs> Or if they're just or the they're same. Just the same. Or if yellow rain supreme. Yes, exactly. But yeah, we're here in Brick Lane. There's quite a lot of uh, knick-knack stores and a nice uh, graffiti. Uh, some of the stores aren't open yet, but it looks like a real nice uh, neighborhood filled with very interesting stores and spaces. So we're just going to walk around while we eat our bagels. Let's eat. Okay, it's bagel time. You know, love a good bagel to start the morning. I got a simple smoked salmon with cream cheese, one of my favorite bagel combinations of all time. Mmm, that salmon is really good. Mmm, yeah, it's nice. It's like, it has a, like a nice smoked like salmon flavor where it's like strong in its flavor, but it's not like fishy in a bad way. But yeah, it like melts in your mouth, but this one's really nice. Mmm. Mm. Getting those fatty acids. Cream cheese is a nice touch, you know, has a nice fatty creaminess to cut through that fish. The bagel is just like a plain bagel. It's like nice and dense and a little bit chewy. It's good, nice and simple. Mmm, delicious. Right, so this is the main event. This is what people come to Bagel Bake for and it is their famous salt beef sandwich. They cut the salt beef fresh, it's just on the counter. I added the classic gherkins and mustard. <laughs> it's very overflowing, the corned beef. I'm gonna have a bite. Mmm. Oh, that salt beef is so nice. Oh yeah, that is my type of salt beef. If you've ever had a corned beef from a Jewish deli, it's that texture, but just the best version of it. And the beef, oh, oh my gosh, it's slipping out. This is disaster. The beef itself, it's like in all of these strands, but all of them are super moist and fatty. Mmm. And the mustard as well, it's perfectly spicy in that mustard spice way. And the gherkins, they had that nice briny crunch. I love this. I really like the bagel texture as well. It's really nice. It's like it's, a little bit sweet. Yeah, like some bagels have that really hard outside. This one doesn't really have it, which I guess it's nice because it makes it a bit easier to eat. This is lovely. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Also, not only is this bagel absolutely beautiful, but look above us right now. Ooh. <laughs> Who would have thought a clear sky day in London? So far on the trip, London's the only place that has actually rained. It's been so gloomy, but you know. But the past couple days have been pretty good. Yeah, I know. Sun's out for locavore. Sun she Okay, so we also got a sausage roll. You know, I couldn't resist a good old sausage roll. Let's just go for it. Mmm. That's a sausage roll. It's like super flaky. Light. But like, the meat tastes a little bit different. It almost has like a slight beefiness to it. Like it tastes a bit different, but it's good. But yeah, it's just like simple meaty. Sausage, flaky, pastry, you know? 
this will get you through the day. Also, uh, parents went back to Bagel Bake and got another bagel, but this time with gherkins and egg. Mmm. Mm -mm. You got the yolk over there, yolk overload. Mm. I think mom forgot to add some mayo. I know mayo would have been really good in this sandwich just to lubricate the whole thing, but it's pretty pleasant, you know. I think the salt beef was 580 pound. Um, but actually not too filling, you know, like, I feel like if you're like a true Brexit geezer, you need like two whole bagels to yourself, or maybe a bagel and a dessert. But it's a pretty good snack on the go. Relatively cheap, I don't know. Honestly, my perception of price is just so, it's so whack here in London. Like everything's just so expensive. Like because we always we always get compare everything to New Zealand dollars. I don't know whether or not it's like is this expensive or is like is this cheap for London? <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Just with ice and sugar and whipped cream. I wanted a little sweet warming snack because surprisingly we're not that full from the bagels. So oh, fluffy and cute. Mmm, yummy. Shout out, uh, watch our Amsterdam videos, you know. We had a little something, something like this. Nice, like nice and just a little bit sweet, you know, not too much. Perfect for the morning. And you know, I've just kind of been marinating in the sun. I was just standing there waiting for my order and a little bit warm now. This is great. I feel so bad now. We're in the, I think it's like the Brick Lane Food Hall. They've got so much diverse selections of food and some free samples. I just, I just had like three different chicken samples. And right. those were two stalls right next to each other. Yeah, they're just giving out free samples everywhere. You got Korean, Singaporean, Brazilian, Chinese. This is, this is great. I feel so bad now that we have to go straight to the Sunday Roast. Oe, oe, oe. Oh, e. oh, e. <laughs> oh sir, thank you. Which one's this one? Hi, amiga. Habibi. Let me try. Another one. Woo, that was good. Korean fried chicken. Thank you. And another one. <laughs> I just had like three other samples in the same stall. <laughs> No, but which one? Beef, sir. Oh. And I'll give you some dumplings as well. This sure. is highly pinero mioli, sir. Oh, good. Thank you. And this is dumpling you'll pick up at the house. Oh, thank you very much. Lithuanian dumplings? <laughs> I'm having a whole meal here. Sure, thank you. Sweet chili chicken. Yummy. <laughs> My heart is full. My stomach is full. Honestly, the cities that we've visited so far is all well and good, you know. You have fantastic food, fantastic distinct cultures, but what I really miss are markets like this where there's just so much diversity. Obviously, London's a very, very diverse city. I'm so happy right now. I want to stay here an extra day. <laughs> I hate this. I hate that we have to leave, but we must stay focused on our Sunday roads. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday! Okay, anyway, I am incredibly excited, you know. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday may mean monster talk derbies and rallies in America, but in England, it only means one thing, Sunday roast. We're here at Blacklock Shoreditch, which is one of the most popular places to get a Sunday roast. Apparently, it is essential to book in advance because this place gets packed. They're famous for their all-in Sunday roast, which is a selection of three meats, lamb, pork, and beef. It, the portions look absolutely absurd, so we only got we only actually got an all-in for three people, but we got a couple of starters and drinks as well. Oh, I'm so excited! First Sunday roast in London. Let's eat. Before we get into the heavy, heavy meats, um, I just got a cocktail. 
Um, what's fascinating about the Blacklock um, drinks list is that they actually have a like a special cocktail every that they rotate every so often. It's called the Drawing Board, but this one, this week's special, is the Americano, which is Acker English Aperitif Campari PX Sweet Sherry and Tonic. Yeah, it's got the orange. Oh yeah, it's like an April spritz, but a bit more uh, on the bitter side. It's very nice, very nice. Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Can have some gravy as well. Thank you. Thank you. Please, uh, some apple ketchup. Thank you. And you also had two pizza coming. So yummy. <laughs> this behemoth. <laughs> there are vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that is the little definition of going all in. <laughs> It's so big. You only got it all in for three as well. I mean, to be fair though, you've got a variety of meats. This is the red meats over here. But on top, that is definitely the pork. You got some veg down there. Some crackling as well. To be honest, what takes up most of the plate, if I rotate it, is the Yorkshire pudding and the potatoes, which looks really nice. Also it comes with some gravy and another pot of gravy. And for the starter, we got a pig's head toast with some pickled chilies and, uh, and uh, gherkins, and of course, gravy again. Okay, where do we start? We just gotta start somewhere. Honestly, I'm gonna get some of the Yorkshire put. Oh, it's got a nest of potatoes in there. Oh yeah. I'll get half of that. You know, we got a good selection of every meat. One, two, three, some veg, some yolk shot pud. All we are missing now is some gravy. Oh yeah, that's looking lovely. There's also a couple of sauces, but honestly, they don't really seem enough for the amount of meat that we've been... This looks like some horseradish. What should that go with? The beef meat? Yeah, the beef. This is some mint. Where's the lamb sauce? Obviously, for the lamb. And then some apple. Of course, for the pork. All right. Let's try the beef. Oh, you know, it's got a little fat cap at the top. Mmm. Nice and beefy. Mm. You get the nice fatty part at the top as well. The gravy is pretty good and flavorful. Not too heavy, which is like fair enough because it's like you've got so much stuff going on. I believe this is a parsnip. Uh huh. Carrot. It's a little baby potato, nice and golden. Mmm. That was really solid, crispy on the outside, very fluffy on the inside. Some Yorkshire pudding. I think I've only had this once in my life, but I'm excited to have it again. Mmm, super light and airy. It's big, but it's really um, airy and fluffy on the inside. So, you know, it gives the illusion of uh, volume. Wham! Let's get some with the, uh, with the mint. Mm. Oh, yeah. That is lamb all right, and of course, lamb and mint. You can't beat that combo, that is very good. Finally, the pork. It looks super, super fatty. Um, a lot of these um, things as well are aged, so this one's 21 day aged. The beef rump was 55 day aged, and the lamb, 28 day aged. So it's got a bit more depth of the meatiness, you know? Now that is good. It was classic roast pork, cooked really well, very fatty and flavorful. Chase it with some crackling. Mm, that's good. Nice simple stuff, definitely a showstopper of a dish. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is great. We got one entree, and that is their pig head toast. If you know us, you know we're Filipino. We love sisig, and sisig is made up of pig head parts. And this looks mighty glorious. It also has some pickled chilies, some gherkins, and the same gravy that you get when you get their uh, roast. Let's pour it in, shall we? Whoa. Okay, not too much, not too much. Oh, that looks gorgeous. A oh, nice hunky piece, you know? Into it. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, soaking up that gravy. It tastes like sushi, but British. I really like the flavor. It's like porky. It's really umami. The pickled chilies like add a nice heat to it. It's really good. And like the texture is nice. The bread is really nice too. Follow it up with a pickle or a gherkin. That's great. I love that. I do adore this uh, fork. Let's get some more, maybe. Some of the. Yes. Honestly, if you were like four hungry, burly people, the all in for four, I'd imagine, isn't actually too much just because most of the roast comprises the volume of the Yorkshire puds. I do note that some people were complaining about the wateriness of the gravy, but I do think it's a, quite a decent texture. It is on the thinner side, obviously, but it's like I feel like if the gravy was thicker, that would kind of be like make you feel gross. So, this is actually a nice balance of uh, thick and thin horseradish. This is the most veggies we've had in a British meal so far on the trip, which I'm really loving. Mm. Mm. That's how you Thank you. <laughs> also, if you're a fan of the gravy, as I am, I'm pretty sure it's bottomless gravy. So they just poured us some, which is amazing, because we still got a lot of Yorkshire pudding to go. Just got to rip apart some. Apparently you got a dip. Just like that. Yeah. That's how you do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like hundreds and thousands of you know ways to do it. Man. Yeah. It's piping hot. <laughs> oh, not. Oh, oh, that's so good though. You know, Parisians have their uh, croissant dipping in coffee. We got the Yorkshire put dipped in the gravy, and it's equally as good, if not better. <laughs> that was a proper. English roast. We're absolutely full, but what a way to spend a Sunday. We're gonna celebrate that animalistic, cannibalistic uh, eating at Black Lock by visiting the Natural History Museum and see some Wee. all sorts of natural stuff. There and, better be bears. And T-Rexes and whales and stuff. Let's go. Finally made it to the Natural History Museum, and there's look at that, Yambi. It's a whale. Yeah, let's explore. So we're in the dinosaur section. <laughs> that, was a, that was a dry joke. They're in the dinosaur section. I feel like a kid again. You got all sorts of fossils and displays and animated dinosaurs as well. Mm. And also this being a natural history museum, it is much more aimed at kids. So I do appreciate that the, uh, the explanations is a bit more simple. So it's not, not too tedious to read it. Remember in a Phoenician verb, fossils. Da, da, da. Oh. 
Okay, that was a fantastic visit to the Natural History Museum, you know, something different. And also, it is a miracle, just like the British Museum, that it is free, free entry, but you do have to book your time slot. Okay, so yeah, it's dinner time. We're gonna have ramen, uh, not British food, uh, Canada Yas, yeah, so close to our hotel, because we have a very early flight tomorrow, so we can't be bothered having a proper British meal. But hey, we're here. We are, yeah, we're literally here. Yes, okay, let's go. <laughs> Okay, so we are here at Canada. Yeah, it's very close to our hotel, like a two-minute walk. And I heard it's a really popular, uh, like Japanese ramen chain. So I was very curious. We're kind of craving something to kind of warm us up, you know, some good soup. And yeah, we're also craving some Asian food. So I'm very excited for this. Let's see. So how's your broth? How's the noodles? It's so good. It's like milky, porky, creamy, umami, salty, comforting. I love this. Got it in the hard, the hard textures, which is what they recommended. It's like on the thin side, which is nice, but it still absorbs like the soup, like the broth really well. Before anything, taste the broth. Oh yeah, that's a nice smooth broth. Yeah, I know, the truffle, I want it to be a bit luxe today. Oh yeah, you know what truffle tastes like, so it adds that, that nice earthy, aromatic tone to this already like delectable and luxurious ramen broth. Oh yeah, noodles. Oh, yeah. Come in, come in, come in. This is a tight speed. This is, this is foreshadowing for filming in Japan. <laughs> Mm, I know the texture says it's hard, but I would say this is just this is yeah this is the right bite of texture that we should have with ramen noodles. That is really good. A bite of the chashu. Mm, you know, nice and fatty, nice and basic chashu. Finally, the egg. That is a magical egg. You can really taste that marinade as well. And that gooey gooey egg. That's magical. They also have onigiri. This one has bonito flake. Well, that's like super savory. But you know, we need love some rice as well. Um, this one is the salmon um, onigiri. Mm, I really like the texture of the rice as well. Actually, let me get inside. Mm, nice flaky salmon. The rice has an amazing texture. And that seasoning on the outside is very lovely. that I'll also have to do for today's vlog. But yeah, London has been an amazing city. So much diversity, so modern, but so traditional at the same time. You know, there's, it's, there's truly no place like it. There's truly no place like it. Because there's no place <laughs> like London. Yes. Only my Sweeney Todd fanatics will get that. And on that bombshell that I'll have to do for today's video, we are off to Madrid next. <laughs> That's going to be incredibly exciting. So catch up next week for some Madrid content. And thank you guys for watching another one of our food and travel videos. Live from London. Live from the Seven Dials. See you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Last point in London. Cheers. <laughs> Bosh. <laughs>